made up our minds. <laughs> Father, we're just submitted under you right now, spirit, soul, and body. Oh, how you tell us to run after you, and we're running after you right now. I thank you, God, for worship in this time where we can just put everything behind us and just enter into this place with you, God, preparing our hearts to receive the word, the manna from heaven. God, I pray that you just take the word out by the spirit of the living God, that each one of us hears it in our own language tonight. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, all God's people said. Yeah. How's everybody? Good. 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 Yay. Good. 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 Yes, amen. So I have so much in me, um, so I'm not really sure how it's going to come out. So I'm just going to do what I always do and just let the Lord lead, right? Amen. So, um, so one thing is that, man, I like got hives in my ears. Excuse me. <laughs> I just have had terrible reactions to the meds. So um, anyways, yeah, too much information. <laughs> just, I don't want you to think that I'm like going crazy when you see me doing weird stuff up here. There's a reason. Um, but anyways, if you guys would uh, turn with me, first of all, I want to start with um, Mark um, 12, verse 30. Somebody's going to holler out the page number. This is a familiar verse to most all people, um, and then it's not familiar to most many people. So, um, yeah, this is where the Holy Spirit wants me to start. You know, today, while you guys are finding the page number... 1169. So um, we sang earlier, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And that's how my day began. Um, I, it began with raise a hallelujah. I love that when I wake up in the mornings, there's times or in the night, I'm hearing worship songs going off in my head. And I've learned to listen to those songs because that's something that God is speaking to me personally. And so raise a hallelujah, obviously, is such an amazing song. And all of us, need to rise up from those ashes, right? That ash heap. And so that's what the Holy Spirit was saying to me. Don't, don't, don't let what you're going through um, conquer you. Don't, don't allow this to happen to you. I mean, you can't stop what's happening to you. It's happening to you. But don't let it get into the mind. Don't, don't let it get into your spirit. It's happening to your physical body, and you have to persevere through that but you persevere that, through that with the Spirit of God. It's not like I'm not in denial. I'm not walking around saying, oh, no, I don't have this. I, no, this is what I have, but you know, this is what I'm doing, and this is what I have peace with. And God is saying to me, raise a hallelujah. And not only was he saying that to me, but I was getting that text to me at different times from different people. This is what I'm hearing. Um, I got some amazing things that, that were given to me. Um, and I appreciate all of them because God works through his people. He works through his music. He works through his word. He works through so many things, right? So um, he was speaking to me about open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And this is an older song, and we actually danced to this song. We haven't done it in a while. But, you know, that's what our prayer should be is that God would open the eyes of our hearts so that we, our eyes were not seen in the natural, but we're seen in the spiritual, that we're seeing the things that God wants us to see versus, versus the reality of what we live in because this is what we live in, and this is all real, yes, but there's a greater good. There's a greater, there's a greater realm out there that that's what we need to see in because if you live in this, you'll, you'll be defeated every day of your life. So you have to rise above. You have to raise a hallelujah. You have to go beyond what you're experiencing and and so you're walking through it but you're never walking through it alone none of us are ever walking through anything alone and so i wanted to just say that tonight <coughs> because that's what he had spoken to me so um and then he also spoke another thing to me which i'm going to share a little bit later that happened this afternoon while i was here and um so but in mark um this I, in Mark, I just want to say this in verse 30, it says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Now, listen, don't we always hear that? Love the Lord your God with all your heart. OK, so and it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, comma, with all your soul. 
mind, will, and emotion, comma, with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And then, and then it goes on to say, and we talk about this a lot, and the second is like this, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Um, and, and so, and there's no, there's no other commandment greater than these. Okay, but let's just look at verse 30. Amen. So when we look at verse 30, it says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Oh, okay, that's the part we remember. And then, you know, we're going to learn how to love the Lord, and, 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 and then we're going to love our neighbors. And once we uh, actually love ourselves, then we can, like, love our neighbors. I know there's another one that says it, Kitty Wampus, like that. But this is the one I want to focus on tonight because the Lord says, listen, are you, are you really loving me with your soul? Come on, church. Really? I mean, are you going to love me more than what you want? Are you going to love me more than what you want to do? Are you going to love me more? Or are you going to let your soulish man control you? It says, love me with all of your soul. Amen. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. And so listen, church, if we, if, if we as, as people, as individuals, aren't going to get that soul part and just go after loving him with the heart, which to a lot of us it's like emotional, the emotional part of us, but it's not. It's everything that you are. But in that, in that, inside of that is your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. So God says, I want you to love me with all of that too. Amen. That means that you're not going to get to have your way all the time, Joyce. You're not going to get to have your way all the time. And, and you're not stuffed. You're not stagnant. You just got to put the flesh on the altar. Amen. That's it. Put that flesh on the altar so that you can keep going and getting into the Holy of Holies. Amen. It requires flesh. That's why it's the brazing altar. It's a bloody, nasty, horrible place. We all go there. But sometimes we don't get past the altar because we won't put the flesh on the altar. We want to bypass it and get into the Holy of Holies and we wonder why we're not hearing from God. God is speaking, but you're not listening because you've decided not to give him a part that he's asking for you to lay down in your soulish realm. Yeah. Right? And then it goes on to say that with all your mind. Now, I put mind in with the soul, but now listen, God is saying mind, and I didn't look up what all these words mean, but mind to me is, again, your intellect, everything about you, again, again, your intellect, your knowledge. His wisdom is above our knowledge and what we think in our mind. His ways are not our ways. Amen. His ways are better. <laughs> That's why we're supposed to acknowledge him in all of our ways, not lean to our own under, understanding, right? We're supposed to worship him and do what he asks us to do, even if we don't want to. Yeah. That's going after him for, for, for everything. That's loving him in a new way. It's, it's, it's more than what we want to love sometimes because we want to have our own way. We, we don't want to pick up our cross. We don't want to carry our cross. God, I did enough today. I'm get, forgiven my husband 60 times plus seven for that sin, for that behavior. I've forgiven my wife. I've forgiven my friend. You know, I've forgiven my pastor. Do it again, says the Lord. Do it again. Amen. you got to love him. you got to love him with everything there is within your being in order to walk out a peaceful life in Christ. And it doesn't just stop there. It says, and with all your strength, with all your strength, everything that it takes, this is what we're made up of. And so everything there is about us, he's not leaving one thing uncovered. We need to love him. Amen. We need to seek him and we will find him. Amen. Amen. And so God is amazing. And this is what he wants us to know today, that this, this is the first commandment. This is the first one. It's not just love the Lord your God. It's love the Lord with all your heart. That means we got to do some soul searching, some heart searching. That's why I say, what's the motive of your heart? Why are you asking somebody to do this? Is it really God or are we using the God card to get somebody to pay attention to us? Right? Right? Is it really God? Search your heart. Because if we love him, we're not going to use him. We're not going to use his name in vain Amen. to get our way. Now, some of us can be deceived. That happens. I get that. But God will bring us out of deception. 
Especially when we pursue him and we love him, we give him our complete mind. Amen. Amen. Everything about us. I want to just share something really quick. I'm thinking about Sandy. Oh, she goes to um, Pastor Rick's church in Florida. And Pastor Rick's coming up again in a couple of weeks. And, you know, it's really funny because he had not been here. He was here a year and a half ago, but when he was here a year and a half ago, he had Pastor Jeff and Raina with him. And if you all remember, Pastor Jeff did all the preaching. So this time when he was here, um, he, he, of course, ministered. And when we were at home, I said, Pastor Rick, I need to tell you this. You, I did not say his anointing increased or that he grew. I said his anointing increased. His anointing increased to go deeper into the hearts of the people. Because I've been walking with him for a lot of years, so I see his growth and the things that God is doing and the change in him as much as he does in me. Amen. And so, anyways, when he left... Um, I had said to him, I, I think that I need to have you back sooner than later because that's what God spoke to me. And so um, when he got home, the Lord ministered to him, and, and we came up with a date, and it's the end of the, end of the month. And, um, well, Sandy O want, wanted to come. And uh, so Jan offered for her to stay at, at her house, and, um, so, and, so, and so God opened a way for her to come. A place to stay she actually got the time off she's seeking God for every open door every door opened and then the Holy Spirit said not yet <laughs> not yet see she knew to walk every step out with him not just because every door opened she said okay God these things are all opening up for me so now what I can go and so she got a hold of me today, and she says, he's the, he orders my steps. He, he made all these things happen for me, but now he's telling me it's not his time. So she's going to obey him and not come at this time. And I think that's amazing because that, I think, is a really good reflection Amen. of the scripture of loving God. Amen. Because she's been wanting to come for a year, and she's been praying about it. But this isn't the time. Even though the doors were opening, this is not the time because God told her that. So she's going to obey the Lord and not come this time. So when the Lord tells us that we're to love him, that we're to love him with everything within us, nothing unturned, nothing changed. We need our Father. We need the Lord. And we need to understand that you can't, we can't just love him when it feels good. That we can't just love him because it works for us. It hurts when our soul wants to do something else. And God is saying, I don't want you to do that. Well, everybody else does it. I can go down to this church and they're okay with that. Maybe so. But if God says no, it's no. Amen. Well, Pastor Joyce doesn't have a problem with it. But if God says no, it's no. Amen. You are accountable for your walk with Christ. Amen. You are. And I am. And if God says no... And everybody else is doing it. You want to do it because you don't want to be left out? You listen to God and he'll bless you for those times you think that you're being left out because you're really not. You might be protected from something. Amen. You don't never know what's going on. Amen. Or you're home and all of a sudden your child spikes a fever and you're not halfway around the world. You're home. You never know why God says no or wait or later or yes. You just listen to him. So you have to love him and part of loving him is obeying him. Doesn't the word speak about that? If you love me, you will obey me. Yeah. It's not that you're going to do all these great works that you're going to be the greatest praise and worship leader or pastor there is in the world or evangelist or prophet. No, you just obey me. If you love me, you will obey me. Amen. Do you want to see the father? Well, look at Jesus, right? right? And so you guys, a lot of you seen the video that I had um, uh, played on Tuesday. I wasn't planning on playing that, but I'm, I praise God that I had it because I've been chewing on it. Because I keep thinking about the word reveal, revealed. And, and so I'm like, I, I get this text, you know, if you're not up to it, maybe you have a video, you should probably stay home. I'm like, don't tell me 
this stuff because I'm trying to press through to do this stuff. And But God had already provided the video. Most of you have seen it. There's so much in it that you can't receive all of it. You just cannot. And not one person in here can say they know it all because if you do, you are God because you cannot know everything that came out and through this woman. And I'm going to tell you, we might have heard some of these things before, but... It stirred some things in me, and one of it is revealed, being revived. Everybody talks about revival, and God took me back to the beginning, and he took me back to the beginning saying, listen, what came alive in you was me. And one of the things that she said in the video that in, in the Old Testament that God was trying to reveal himself to his creation, to humanity. In the whole Old Testament, and they still rejected God. So then Jesus came, and Jesus came, and Jesus came, but he is a reflection of the Father, still again trying to reveal himself, who God is in, the, in Jesus in the New Testament, right? And he was still rejected and crucified, right? Okay, and so then what she said is now the Holy Spirit is trying to be revealed. She believes in this generation, and it's a hard work. Right? It is a hard work, but if we're diligent and we love the Lord with everything that is in us and we allow him to control our souls when our souls want to just spout off in the mouth, they're going to see what's different about you. It's the Holy Spirit in me. Why, why are you different? I've, I've changed. Or I, Wow, this is so cool. I met with Dave. God has changed this man. I love it when a, first, a person first understands they've been changed by the presence of the living God. It, is, it, it ignites the fire in me again. It's like, it, it's like, whoa, This I remember those days. We can become stagnant so easy. Don't let your flame go out. It is up to you. It is not up to me to fan it. The word says you fan it. You do it. If you feel stagnant, then you need to go back to the beginning and allow yourself to set at the feet of Jesus and fan into flames the gifts of God that are within you. And the first gift is love. Amen. And if you stand in the mirror and you hate yourself, you are not in the love of God. I'm sorry, church. There's days I don't like the way I looked, especially the last week. I was super embarrassed people coming to my house. But it was what it was. It was reality. That's where I was. My husband said to me, now this is when you know it's bad. Honey, but I still love you. <laughs> and Teddy. And Teddy. And Teddy. Yes. And it's true. You know, I, like I said, I've never been humbled. And it's not wrong to be humbled. I'm not afraid to be humbled because you all hear my mess all the time. But it's just different. You know, I think God did something different in our marriage during this time, um, which was beautiful. And I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but I, I think it's beautiful if you look beyond your circumstance and you see what God is doing, right? And so that's love. You know, and my soul was like, ah, I don't really want to, you know, I don't really want to go there because of this. And, and you know, but God still pours his love out on us, even when we're a little kitty wampus in our thinking and, and our, the things that we do. Sometimes it's just, it's our human nature, but at the same time it's sin, and we need to go back to the beginning and go back to what God is doing in our lives. Amen. It's not okay not to love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, you have a disconnection with God, and it isn't because of him. It's because of us. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because you don't want to give him your soul. You want to give him your heart and your spirit and all the good stuff in that. But when it comes to the hard stuff, the soul, your wants, your will, and your emotions, and you, you'd rather be mad for six months or, or you, you, know, you got it all figured out and you don't want, you're going to fight. You're going to be miserable. You know how easy it is to get on your face and give it away Amen. but we don't realize that till we get on our face and we give it away when we get up off the floor something's changed Amen. why because we got out of the way so he could reveal himself Amen. I'm telling you that word revealed I'm going to go after that thing with everything in me because God says 
that revival isn't what people think it is. Revival is a lot bigger than what we realize, and it's going to start in individuals, including us in here in this church, because we can be a whole lot more on fire than we are right now, but it's because it's because of life and circumstances, and we get stagnant, and our souls all of a sudden are in the way, and we'll go this far with you, God, but I ain't going any further. No, you say, right, I'm just going to go left because I think that's going to hurt over there or something's going to be revealed about me and I don't want to deal with it right now because that's not my plan, God. My plan is a year down the road or my plan is two weeks from now. But God says, are you going to love me with your soul today? Are you going to love me with everything that is within you? Or are you just going to be you and you be in control? That's okay. Be there. Then what happens? You don't like yourself anymore. Amen. You're more critical than you have been. You're miserable. Everything you see about people, you want to criticize. It's not good. When you watch praise and worship, you're looking for the mistakes in it instead of entering in with Christ. Mm -hmm. Why? Because something in our souls we were unwilling to love God with. Amen. We've held it back from him. We've got a hold of it, and we're not going to give it to him. Something in our minds that we're just not going to, we're not going to agree with the word. Well, you're basically saying, God, I don't agree with you. Well, if you love me, you'll obey me. It doesn't matter if you get the full understanding of it. It is my word. It is written, and this is what it says. Amen. And so you have to be obedient to that word. Right? Yes. If, he, if the word says, do not have sex before marriage, don't have it. We failed in that. Our generation did mind it. I did. But I want a generation to come up that we can teach them through the word, through love, and through truth that this is the thing. Some people don't have choice. It's been taken. They've been fooled. Whatever. They got slipped of which a great pill or whatever. That happens in this world, but that does not change who they are. Amen. But what we want to do is help our children and this generation and ourselves who are out there, single, who would love to have a relationship, walk in purity in Christ, but their souls aren't going to want to do that. I know. I did it. But God will give you the ability to do it if you will give it over to him. Amen. I promise you. I had to live that. I had to walk that out. And it was amazing. It was supernatural that something like that could be so real. But I gave it over. I gave it over. When the word says, you know, that it's good when a, when a, when a man finds a wife, you know, and when somebody would tell me God was jealous and wanted me all himself, I'd fight them with scripture, battle scripture. Don't do that. But that's where I was at. That's all I knew. That was my battlefield. I'm like, don't be telling me that because, you know, God says. <laughs> but, see, the time was going to come. I had to be transformed. Yes. And we need to be transformed in this room. I know that. Yeah, yeah. I know that. Don't feel alone. Don't feel like you're bad because things haven't changed in your life. Give it over to him. Give it all. That's what he's got to have. God is a jealous God. But this is the thing. He wants to reveal who he is through who he is in you. Do you understand that? That's where that revival is going to flare up from. In you. Amen. Because you're going to see him in you. And then when you go out, people are going to see him in you and want that. And wonder why. And you're going to be in a place of freedom where you can give that to them. And say, this is what it is. It's just... It is just loving God with everything that is in me. It's being first saved and joined to the spirit of the living God. And he says, I will change you. I will do it. That you will be able to follow my precepts. Out here, you can't do it. But in him, all things are possible. Amen. And he wants to reveal who he is to us in this room. Amen. To us that are listening and watching. But we got to let him reveal who he is. Revival is coming, but it's not going to look like, it's not going to look like what people think it's going to look like. Do you understand? God is pouring out his spirit now. He's pouring out his spirit now. And I'm telling you, 
that when it comes into this, co this community in Manistee, we're going to be part of it. God has said the seeds have been spread all over this community and beyond, and the watering is happening right now. We cannot see it in the natural, but I can see the sprinklers just going, Ch -ch 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 and it's germating, and people are dying underneath the soil, and they don't understand what's happening to them. And all of a sudden, something's going to happen, and the harvest is going to come, and God God is going to draw all men unto himself by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. By the Holy Spirit of God. Not by man, not by woman, not by child. It will be the Holy Spirit that works through people. And, it, and this is what people do. They make a mistake. Well, you're drawn to me. Oh, they're drawn to me. I'm the greatest of praise and worship. I'm the greatest preacher. I'm the greatest. And then they get kitty wampus off. I pray in the name of Jesus that does not happen here. Pray in the name of Jesus. Keep this church undergirded with prayer. There's many leaders to be brought up for what's coming in this church, and that's what discipleship has been about. So you got to love him with everything. You can't be halfway in. You can't do it. You can't and serve God with everything that is within you. You've got to be all in. All of us have got to be all in. And if we're not discipled and we're not taught and we don't get fed and we don't get the word right and we don't put it into practice and step out in faith and let faith meet you there, God will do what he says he'll do. Amen. And then he says the second, like... It is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But you got to get A before B comes. Right. You've got to get this. So you need to meditate. You need to ask the Lord to reveal to you where you're holding back in your mind, where you're holding back in your soul, where you're holding back even in your heart. Maybe, you know, maybe the, you know, we're, we're worshiping other things out there. And we don't want to give God the extra time that he wants. And there we sit. There we sit. A couple more things. In Matthew eleven twenty seven, 27, and this is about the word revealed. It says, all things have been delivered to me, Jesus, by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And he to whom the Son wills to reveal him. He's going to do it because it is his will to reveal to all man. But not all man is going to be willing. It's God's heart that not one should perish, but that doesn't mean people aren't going to perish because people will not love him right. They won't give him the soul. They will not give him the things of their mind. And they will reject him. It says in the end times, even the elite will be persuaded to go the wrong way. It talks about the great falling away. We've got to be planted and rooted in the word of God, but we've got to be planted and rooted in the spirit of the living God, in the word of God. You can't live in the word of God as law. You have to live in the word of God in spirit and truth because he is the word, and when we're in him, we're in the word in spirit. If you use it to beat up people, that's not what it's for. I realize that's been done most of our lives. I know that. It's been, I did it, and it's it's been done to me. Out of ignorance, we didn't know any better, but praise God for forgiveness of sin, especially for sins of ignorance, because every one of us have been there. Amen. But God is amazing, and he's got a plan. And then um, I'm going to read, yes, um, lyrics in just a second of a song that we're going to sing. But it says um, in Psalms 14:2. It says, the Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there's anyone who understands, who seeks God. He's looking for us. He's looking for those that don't know him yet. He's looking. He's watching over his creation. That's us. Are we seeking him? Are we asking him? No, I, have, I didn't seek him all week. I'm too sick to read 
to worship or anything. But praise God that he takes care of me in those times. But oh my gosh, how wonderful it is to get back in to the word and into that drink and into that food because that's what we need. The smallest heart cry for the Lord results in action from him. The smallest heart cry for the Lord results in action from him. That's him. He's a loving, compassionate, not willing that anyone should perish because of unbelief. Now, this is the first and the greatest commandment that we talked about tonight, that that's not what gets you to heaven. What gets you to heaven, of course, is believing. This is what happens upon that and then learning what his love is, what he's asking of us. That love just isn't a superficial love. It's so much deeper than that. But it's so important that we go after him with everything in us so that we're not just standing on the wayside saying, my gosh, Lord, I missed it. How come Marcy is doing so well and not me? Don't compare yourself to other people. But sometimes we have questions. But the Lord's going to come and say, you didn't give me your soul. You went after men instead. Instead of waiting. You went after women instead. You went after that, that big job when I wanted you to stay at this job because I had purpose. It's not about the money. It's about the harvest. Amen. You know, you wouldn't give up the alcohol for me. You wouldn't give up the drugs for me. So because of that, that's where we sat. And this isn't condemnation toward anybody because we all struggle. We have sins that most people don't see. And God's revealing them to his body because he wants them. He died for them. He did everything for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. So this afternoon when I was in here and just preparing, um, getting the music ready and asking God for what he wanted, we're going to close with a song called Nothing Else. And um, I think it's Cody Carnes. I think I, I asked Dave to learn this song. Um, and so I'm going to read you a few of the lyrics. It says, I'm caught up in your presence. I just sit here at your feet. I'm caught up. In this holy moment, I never want to leave. This is where we need to be. Oh, I'm not here for the blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. I, you know, there's such a spirit of entitlement over the United States in this world and in the generation that unfortunately we brought up because we paid for everything and gave everything and people didn't have to do chores like we did, rake yards and do dishes and all that. I, I, we got weak as parents. And uh, because of that, we're sowing what we, or we're reaping what we've sowed. They can't even keep people employed. Um, people won't even take jobs. It's very hard, but listen, we need to pray for this generation. And even when we come to church, check your heart. It's okay. We need the Lord. He wants to hear what's going on in our lives, but are we here expecting him to do something for us? That's how I started. I, I went because I was broken, and then I was like, okay, God, I'm going to do this. If you do, I'm going to do this because I know that your word is true, and if I do this, and you'll give me what I want. And that's how I started running after Christ. So he tricked me because what he did is he changed my desire. He did, and he has given me what I wanted. But while I went running after him, little did I know that he was going to get a hold of my heart. And because of that, he changed my heart and then gave me what was good for me, not what I wanted. Amen. So, Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I've been actually asking God to do this because I, 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 I don't want to go back spiritually wise as far as I've grown so much, but I loved that honeymoon period, and I want some more of that. So it's a, our anniversary is coming up, so let's do that again, God. Let's do it again. And so 
But sometimes we get, we come in and we start out where we're just going through the emotions of church or we're just going and singing another song. We're really not there. Give him your soul. Give him your soul. Give him your mind. Take me back to where we started. I opened up my heart to you. I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. God, I'm here for you to do all this for me. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Take me back, bless you, to where we started. I opened up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in the holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for a blessing. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. And more than anything that you can do, I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Just you. That's where I was at. That's where I started after I got the revelation when God revealed himself to me by his Holy Spirit out in St. Louis. And I've been changed ever since. Not that I did everything right ever since, because I have not. But that's when change came. And with the Holy Spirit, change comes. So that's where we need to go tonight. So as we close with this song, can you take that, babe? I'm going to invite you to um, come forward and spend some time with the Lord. Because this is really heart matters. This isn't anything I need to hear. This is not even anything I need to pray for you for. You just got all the truth and all, all that you need. You Now it's up to you what you're going to do with it. I know what I'm going to do with it because this is just as much for me as it is for you. So, Father, Holy Spirit, prepare our hearts. Search us and maybe show us. Maybe something that we just need to give over to you because, God, every person in this room that I know of loves you. But sometimes we just think we just have to love you like the world, which isn't so good. But we want to love you the way that you are commanding us to love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind and all of our strength. Father, search our hearts and take us to that level with you, God, with you by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. 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 So if you want to get that going, it's kind of a long song, guys. Um, but I want to um, have you all stand up with me. And then I want you to have your time with the Lord. It's like an eight-minute song, something like that. So, yeah. And so this is going to be plenty of time for you. Whether you need to get where you're at, come up here to the cross. Just stand up here and worship him and open up your heart. It's an amazing song. We sang it during pre-service. But this God, this God had given me this today while I was preparing for service, and it's pretty amazing. So let's, um, let's do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.